and get us going. Uh, just uh, overall, what we, I gave you a little Yankees Red Sox. First off, the idea last week, and I wanted to save this for Toyota, but I'll throw it out there right now. The Yankees look like a horse's fanny with the whole thing with Sanchez. I mean, Sanchez last week, his lack of effort, which was just a disaster in that one game against Tampa and embarrassing to the team and to the franchise. And then the Yankees conveniently, you know, groin issue see in August. Now, I'm assuming there was something wrong. I got to take the Yankee word on that. But if there was a groin issue for, uh, for Sanchez, why the hell did he play the game anyway behind the plate? And he said that the groin bothered him right away in the bottom of the first inning on a pass ball when he didn't run after it, and then the uh, Rays scored the first run of the game. He said that is when it bothered him. It was a complete lack of hustle. Well, why didn't Aaron Boone, when the inning was over, bring Sanchez in the trap next to him and say, Gary, why didn't you run into the ball? Well, let's get my, my, my groins tough. All right, you're coming out of the game. Get Roman in there behind the plate. Or, if he doesn't say his groin is t- uh, bothering him, sit him on a bench for a lack of hustle. If you're going to say that he was injured, and that is why we got a, he didn't run, well, then why did he play nine innings after he first said he was bothered in the bottom of the first? It make any sense. If the man is injured, then why is he in the games inning two through eight? That makes absolutely no sense. And I like Boone. Don't get me wrong. I like Boone. But I got to hear Boone after the game say, well, you know, when asked about it by the media, let me check the video first. Hold on now. Flaherty checked the video. Ken Singleton checked the video. I checked the video. Steve Torrey, we all checked the video. How do I, what do you, what do you got to, you got to call Cashman to find out what the discipline is? Uh, we know Cashman's running the team, but that is absolutely, I could not believe that was a response. Let me check the video after the Video after the game, what video? It's right in front of you. How do you not see that? He didn't run in the ninth on the ground ball and he didn't run in the first on the pass ball. So twice, and then he played the other eight innings. So if he's so banged up and it, and it groin bothered him, well, then why did he play in the middle part of the game? And if he said the groin wasn't bothering him, then why wasn't he benched like Bobby Cox once did to Andrew Jones, get him out of there for not hustling? Who, by the way, Sanchez has had a history of not hustling anyway, is a ridiculously horrendous catcher, and also sucker punched 20 Tigers last year in that big brawl and got a five-game suspension. Whatever it was, three games, five games, he got a suspension. So, really, and then the thing is, then the Mets get killed left and right because they have this issue with Cespedes. You know, he plays one or two games against the Yankees last week, and they only had a three-game series. I think he DH'd one game and played the other, and then he couldn't play because his ankles, his heels hurt, and he found out that uh, he has to have surgery on both heels, which is unbeknownst to me. Or, I mean, if, and if the Mets knew about these heel issues, which they said they did, see, the Mets are in a tough spot. If the Mets say they didn't know about the heels, well, then they're going to get killed for giving them a four-year, $100 million contract. Well, how did you give them this money and didn't know about his heel issues? Uh, so if they say they didn't know, they get look like a horse. So they have to say they knew. But then they get killed then. Well, if you knew, why'd you sign them? And Cespedes, uh, lovable, uh, the lovable guy that he is, when the Mets go to Miami, Cespedes hangs out in Port St. Lucie. Why he want to do that, I have no idea. But he would never want to visit the Mets down in Miami when they played the Marlins. But the Mets got killed for handling Cespedes the way they did, and I can understand that. Now, he's an odd duck, and he's a weird guy, and, you know, there's a reason why he's been in a million teams, Tigers, Red Sox, A's, Mets, and nobody and nobody gave him any offers, and there's a reason. Nobody wants to deal with him. He's a strange bird. Now, maybe there's are legitimate injuries. Uh, you would think he would have told the Mets. The Mets say they knew. Who knows? And the manager said he had no idea. A lot of people think that's a bunch of nonsense. I don't know how to read it. But... And so everybody in New York killed the Mets about Cespedes, which is easy to do. They've had a horrendous year. Uh, they're a disastrous franchise right now. They've had no... It's been a terrible... But how come nobody got in the Yankees? At least what I read. I mean, how... I mean, I mean, they let Sanchez... And then they made sure that Sanchez, you know, did all the apologies, you know, middle of the week. He went on the radio, Susan Waldman, and he made sure he told the press. Man, you know, they made sure he did the right thing, but they had a chance to bench him to make the point, you know, you can't do this. Or not play him because he was hurt, and they opted to do neither. And then when they asked Boone after the game, he didn't mention anything about a groin. He said, well, I got to see the video first. What video? I mean, that was, that was mind-boggling with the Yankees. Absolutely, I, I didn't understand it. 
I, I, and the Yankees, we all know the Yankees are very temperamental about Sanchez. They're nervous about his defense. They didn't like last year when Girardi read on the riot act. And, and they, you know, I don't know if that's why they fired Girardi, but they thought that, you know, we all heard the Yankee excuse of one of the reasons why they got rid of Girardi because they worried about him dealing with young players. Well, there's a perfect example. He gave uh, Sanchez a tough time last year for his lack of defense, and then the Yankees don't want to get Sanchez annoyed because Sanchez is one of these guys that if you get on the wrong side of him, you got a dog on your hands. And the Yankees don't want to do that because the guy is a catcher can have 40 home runs, which we all know. So it's a very, very weird state. And now that San- and now, you know, conveniently, we have a groin issue. If we didn't have a groin issue during the game, he played the whole game, but we had a groin issue after the game. So I did not understand where the Yankees are coming from. Now, in the meantime, they made two good trades. Uh, you know, Britain was going to help, as we alluded to at the top there at the last hour. You know, we all know Britain's going to do a good job in that bullpen. Uh, you know, I know he had a bad inning the other day. All right. I mean, and he's coming off injuries, and he's not been good so far this year on a consistent basis. I mean, this guy did have an ERA of .56 two years ago. I mean, this is – I and he's, you know, he didn't have an arm issue. He ripped his Achilles. I have to figure that he is going to bounce back and be very, very important. He seems to be a good guy. He understands that Chapman's the closer. So, I mean, he seems to be all right from that standpoint. Uh, so that was a good trade. And Hap is a low-maintenance pitcher. He can give you five innings a night. Is he great? No. Is he a guy that, um, you know, uh, he's got some experience, however, um, and, you know, he's not going to go long in games, but he'll give you five solid innings, run the bullpen out there, and away you go. And so they made two good trades and two additions. I I think the Yankees probably checked in on Sayed DeGrom. The Yankees probably checked in on a couple of others. They probably even have called the Nationals about Harper. Who knows? Uh, And they called the Orioles about Machado. We understand that. But as far as what Cashman could have done for the team, you can't argue. He made two good moves. Now it's the Red Sox turn, who bring in Ovaldi from Tampa. Now Ovaldi is, you know, he's a tease, Ovaldi. He had pitched like he did yesterday where he was unhittable for seven innings. And then the next start, he'd go out there against a big team with the cameras on him and he'd implode. Four innings, nine runs. I mean, he's, he's very, very erratic. He can be, his shelf is higher than, than Hap, but he's not as consistent. Now, would the Red Sox have the nerve to start him in an elimination game against the Yankees in the first round? You know, Sale will go twice. You know, they're, Probably pitch Price and their pitch Porcello. That leaves you another game. Would they have the guts to give the ball to Ovaldi? Rodriguez, they could give him 2-2. Two, two, but you don't want to pitch lefties against the Yankees. You know, they got all those right-hand hitters, especially, I mean, you can, you know, especially at Fenway. I mean, would they pitch or give Ovaldi the ball in a big spot against the Yankees, his ex-team? That would be an interesting question. So those two teams with what they did, okay, away we go. Now, we all know about Machado. We talked about that uh, last week. That was a move the Dodgers, you know, essentially had to make. I don't think they necessarily resign him, but they had to make. Uh, so I'm not going to sit there and argue too much uh, as far as the Dodgers. Who knows what the Orioles got back? A lot of people in baseball say they got back good stuff. Who knows? The Yankees getting Britain does two things. It kept them away from Boston and Houston uh, in the American League, and those are the three best teams in the sport, and you would figure one of those three teams is going to win a championship. Cubs get Cole Hamels. Their pitching has been a disaster, partly because the Cubs and Theo have done a horrendous job with free agent pitchers. All right, Lester is Lester, but, you know, uh, I mean, Chapman's been atrocious. They gave him 40 million. He can't get the ball over the plate. We all know Darvish, and let's not forget J.D. Drew and Matt Clement and Julian Tavares. uh, uh, Theo is much better with trades, Rizzo, uh, Ortiz. He is much better in that department. And drafting Schwerber, he is much better there than he is in free agents. Uh, the free agents, not nearly as good, and those four or five are a perfect case in point. And, you know, Darvish has given him nothing, and everybody could have told you that. He's soft. He's fragile. $126 million for that. And then, of course, we all know now Chapman. And they got $165 million, who aren't, you know, which is absurd. That don't even pitch. Now you have a guy like Hamels. It's a trade. Worth a chance. No, He pitched a no-hitter in that ballpark once a couple years ago. Um, you know, he's a guy for the Phillies. Uh, no, I think he may have done it for Texas. I forget, but he did pitch a no-hitter in that ballpark. You know, if Hamels has got something left, the big game doesn't seem to scare him. You can't argue with that. The Brewers, you know, 
listen, did I, did the Brewers got Kane and Yelich in the offseason? So they did a good job there. They traded for Moustakis. They're going to play a six foot three kid, Travis Shore at second base. I mean, we'll see how that works out. They need another bat. They get that. They need some pitching. And, you know, maybe the price too high on some of these pitchers. That is a conservative organization. They were very conservative last year. They sat back. Could have hurt them significantly. They didn't win, make the playoffs after having a big lead. Uh, we'll see how this plays out for Stearns. Zach Wheeler, I don't think the Mets are going to trade him. Why would you trade Zach Wheeler if you're the Mets? They're finally getting something out of him after all these years of injury. And and he's the guy they got for Beltran from the Giants a long time ago. They're finally getting something out of him. Now you get rid of him? I, I wouldn't do that if I'm the Mets. I mean, who are not going to trade DeGrom or not going to trade Syndergaard, and they have Matt sitting there, so why trade Wheeler? That's the makings of a halfway decent staff. So we'll see what Milwaukee does here at the end of the day. Houston gets Ryan Presley, can help their bullpen. I don't know if he's going to get three outs with the season on the line, but he does what he does as far as that bullpen is concerned. You know that. Uh, The Phillies get Cabrera. He's a good pro. He's a professional player. He will give them a good at bat and a good ball game in a postseason series. He knows what he's doing. That was a good move as far as the Phillies are concerned. Brad Brock goes to the Braves. They need help in the bullpen. Okay, uh, it's not going to light up the world, uh, but away we go there. The Nationals are not going to make a lot of trades. The Nationals are going to sit back, and you know Rizzo is going to say, hold on now. I'm not going to add players. We haven't earned that with 52 and 53, but I'm not going to go crazy and trade guys out because the Braves and Phillies I don't trust. We could still win the division only six games behind. So the Nationals are going to sit tight and do absolutely nothing. The Giants are also going to sit tight. Now, the Giants are in a trickier spot than Washington. The Giants are also a game behind. The problem is Colorado, Arizona, and L.A. are a lot better than Philadelphia and Atlanta. So the Giants who, you know, put 41000 in that ballpark every night who have a huge payroll and hate the fact the Dodgers are winning this division year after year, the Giants are not going to make Madison Bumgarner or even Andrew McCutcheon available. Uh, they're not going to add, but they're going to sit tight and, you know, somehow maybe they get a miracle. The Giants are not going to trade off. That's not the Giant way. And I don't think the Nationals are going to do that either. So from that standpoint, let's leave that alone. And I think at the end of the day, the Nationals could still sign Harper long term. I wouldn't even be shocked if they tried to renew. Uh, negotiate here sometime uh, at the end of this uh, break here. But I don't necessarily say that Harper will leave them in the offseason. I don't think Machado will stay with the Dodgers. I could see Harper at the end of the day staying uh, with, um, uh, with uh, believe it or not, I could see him staying with Washington. So Philly makes a move. Atlanta makes a move. The Cubs make a move. Moustakas goes to Milwaukee. He'll play third base. He's a decent third baseman. The Dodgers get Machado. Colorado's tweaked it. They brought in a reliever. We'll see about them. Arizona brings in Escobar, the kid from the Twins who can hit. Uh, here play. Maybe they make a move for a reliever here, too. Uh, you know, Houston brings in Presley. Seattle's been relatively quiet. Oakland hasn't done a whole heck of a lot. We'll see how that works out. Indians bought in hand, so they feel they're okay there with a little insurance. Of course, if, in fact, guys like Miller and Cody Allen leave, hand in the meantime can fortify that bullpen. And, of course, the Yankees and Red Sox do what they have to do. So, you know, we are where we are. The The deadline has become a deadline. I mean, there is nothing going on. The idea that tomorrow at 4 o'clock is some big scenario, that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, there is no such thing as a deadline now as far as Major League Baseball is concerned. They make these trades around the All-Star break. They consummate them as quickly as they can so they get the players on their teams and they get an extra four or five days out of them and help them win. These margins of errors are pretty slim. Help these teams win. So from that standpoint, you know, outside of, you know, you know, maybe uh, maybe Chris Archer gets traded. Who knows? Outside of something like that, I don't expect a lot of activity by tomorrow. 17 after the hour, that gets you going an hour or two. 